is a two-part video. So this is part one. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at conservation, and it's related to AQA, uh, GCS, GCE, which is A-level biology, um, and it's part of populations in ecosystems. So let's have a quick look at a spec check. Move me out of the way. And today I'm going to be looking at conservation of habitats frequently involves management of succession. Now, the thing is, in this uh, kind of content, you're going to need to know the basics of conservation. To go into detail will take too long. And also you need to remember that in the exam, you need to actually evaluate evidence and data. So that's the key thing that I'm going to be looking at, particularly in part two, when I'm going to go through some exam questions with you. But you do need to show an understanding of the need to manage the conflict between human needs and conservation in order to maintain the sustainability of natural resources. So um, that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm not going to focus on mark release recapture. Uh, it's just on conservation. So this very short video is just going through the key concepts of conservation. So a key thing is, what is conservation? Well, it's about protecting and managing species and habitats in a sustainable way. So remember, sustainability is about ensuring that you keep what you have today for future generations. So it's about ensuring that, that, that particularly rare species um, and rare habitats are protected. So uh, conservation methods can be adapted uh, to the constant changes that occur within ecosystems, for example, related to uh, succession. So maybe stopping succession at a specific point to ensure a certain species does not become extinct, um, but also about uh, maintaining habitats as well that might be lost through uh, hu the human impact, the human intervention. So why conserve habitats and species? Well, there are four main things I'm going to talk about. So the first one is social. So uh, it's about uh, the physical, intellectual and emotional health of, indiv of individuals. What I mean by that is I'm pretty sure most people like to visit beautiful places. They like to visit countryside. They like to see certain species um, in their natural habitats. It's also very good. It's been shown to be very good for uh, human uh, mental health and for their physical health as well. Economics are really important as well because ecosystems do provide resources that we need. Um, biodiversity provides actual and potential material and economic benefits to people. I think the best example there is the Amazon rainforest. The vast majority of uh, pharmaceutical medicines that we get, most active ingredients come from plants and therefore the Amazon rainforest is very biodiverse and is likely to have many different active ingredients useful to humans. Uh, there is an ethical reason as well, so you encourage respect and stewardship of ecosystems and the earth. Um, for example, the Earth is our life support system after all, so it's important we all have a responsibility to protect it. Ecologically, preserving life support systems of Earth, so e ethical and ecological are, are very linked, uh, but it's about maintaining food chains, uh, again, for the benefit of humans eventually, so if we um, if a species becomes extinct, it would affect food chains that eventually affects other species, including ourselves. And obviously things like global warming. So deforestation, we're going to be um, burning trees, for example, then we're going to lose those carbon sinks and we're going to raise the amounts of carbon dioxide and also methane from livestock, for example, uh, which will cause more global warming gases and therefore global warming in the environment leading to uh, degradation of habitats and also affecting humans directly. Now, I could sit here and talk about the history of conservation in the UK. I think it's really important for students to have a very good understanding of um, how, why we conserve things and how we conserve things. Um, so um, 
I'm going to suggest you watch this video to get a really good overview. This is uh, the work of the Wildlife Trusts in Britain, and it's about 100 years of nature conservation. And it talks about the history of how did the protection of habitats and species come about and how is it actually um, how we've created space in the UK to try and protect important species. So there's the YouTube link. Um, and I'm going to say it's a good one to watch. There you go. So you might realize um, that con we're, when we talk about conservation of certain species, what we're talking about is keystone species. So these are really important plants and animals that play a unique and crucial way in which the ecosystem functions. So without those, then the whole of the ecosystem is dramatically different or it could cease to exist. So, for example, here's a couple of examples. So uh, here's a sea star and also a sea otter. So they play a real vital part in the food chain. They play a vital part in um, kind of concreting that ecosystem. And it, with, with them gone, it would affect many other species. OK, so conservation methods. Now, in the spec, they do mention certain methods, but there are many, many conservation methods. Um, and the key thing is, that you will be given information. So um, I'm giving you the kind of central ideas behind how we preserve conditions to benefit certain keystone species. So the first one I've talked about before is management of succession. So for example, you might want to limit succession uh, in certain habitats to stop the uh, destruction of certain habitats like grasslands or, or um, heathlands, for example. Secondly, you could have seed banks, so therefore you conserve rare plant species. So at the moment, there are seed banks around the world that collect um, species, even common species, and they're actually actually putting them in vaults underneath the ground um, so that when if or if they become extinct, we'll be able to recolonize certain areas in the future. Captive breeding, so that's things like zoos and also wildlife parks where for example, Chester Zoo does a lot of work, uh, captive breeding, um, and they're looking at actually um, releasing animals into their natural environments, into preserved habitats as well. Um, things like fishing quotas. So again, humans are trying to protect um, fish, fish stocks in the oceans. So this reduces species decline. On the flip side though, obviously, many people um, depend on the economy of fishing um, and therefore you need to, to look at both sides of the argument. And then in particularly in this country, in the UK is protected areas. So we have national parks, nature reserves, sites of special scientific interest and many other kind of protected areas within this country, which is a good idea. So in your exam, they'll ask you to evaluate certain methods or certain conservation methods, because whatever method you uh, do, there's going to be some form of conflict. So um, I've just highlighted some main conflicts here. Uh, they may be useful for the exam, they may be not, but it gives you an idea of what we mean by uh, a conflict. So if you're evaluating material, uh, these are kinds of the things you need to think about, the negatives of conservation. And the key thing is it does reduce the area for farming and food production, which is an issue if you have a growing human population. Um, also, if you want to reintroduce uh, plants or animals into the wild, that can cause issues related to bringing disease in or invasive species being brought into certain areas. You could actually create more problems than you're solving with competition between species for resources. Uh, as I said before, fishing quotas, they may cause some fishermen to go out of business and uh, this will affect local coastal employment and investment where there are not many jobs uh, for many people uh, throughout the year anyway. Uh, protected areas do restrict development of infrastructure for economic growth, so you're restricting your economic growth. Um, and also the flip side, even though you do protect them, they do attract sometimes too many people. So things like tourists that can destroy an area that is beautiful and won't be beautiful for very long. 
Okay, I hope you found uh, that useful just as a review of conservation. Um, but please do check out part two for the exam questions. As I said, you will be given lots of information that you need to describe, you need to draw conclusions, and you need to evaluate information and data. So that's quite an important skill uh, for understanding this particular topic. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I will see you soon.